to environment a little bit. I want to uh, dive deeper into temperature, humidity, VPD, CO2, all that good stuff. Let's start with temperature. What do you typically aim for for temperature for the different stages of growth? Um, for the seedling stage, I like to stay in the 76 to 80. Um, I'm in a basement, so it's kind of hard to get the warmer temperatures without sucking your humidity out. So I find a good balance about 75 to 80, and I pretty much ride that same temperature throughout the whole grow. Uh, towards flower, the end of flower, I'll kind of try to stay towards that 75. Sometimes 74, 73 is what I get, um, and that's fine with me. Um, I haven't noticed any, you know, less growth or and obviously the terpenes have a lot to do with temperature that we're starting to realize and i feel like the lower temperature is helping me out as far as keeping some terpenes other than flower that's pretty much it 75 to 80 all the way to finish the grow now what about relative humidity what do you typically aim for for the different stages of growth um same thing with the temperature i kind of ride 70 um, I'll go a little higher when there's seedlings. If, if I see 75, 80, you know, obviously that's good. I'm not going to try to fight that. But when it comes to vegging, I'm about 65, 70%, and I ride that until week three of flower, and then I'll do a 5% decrease as the weeks go on. But I, I usually typically stay about 50%. Um, with me being in the basement, it's just kind of, you know, you kind of tackle your – your weakest link and for me it was kind of just okay don't mess with this too much let's just ride this um 50 maybe have some extra fans going in the room and i haven't had any bad luck with botrytis or mold yet so i'd like to stick at the 50 percent if i could i just i felt like it was there wasn't as much drooping for me so it's 50 percent like the lowest you go in flower yes yes okay. and and i know a lot of people are against that and i'm asking for problems and i probably am um, but like I said, being in the basement, it's hard for me to get that 45% without sacrificing something else. So with the airflow and, um, I got intake outtakes, I got two fans going, one in the middle of the canopy, one on top of the canopy. Uh, so, so far so good. I don't have the VPD chart memorized in regards to like the dark green range versus the light green range versus the yellow range, but the, the numbers you mentioned there seems like they would be either in the dark green range or light green range. For VPD, are you monitoring VPD at all? Definitely, and that's what I kind of base my temperatures and humidity on is just to keep that VPD. Um, when I'm in seedling, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, I'm okay with, maybe a little lower. Um, that's what I'm shooting for. And then I'll ride that all the way to the end of veg and get to, you know, beginning of flower, maybe 1.2 VPD. But I do try to stay in those parameters on that. I think it's the pulse chart that you use. <clears throat> that's pretty much what I've used most of the time is kind of stay in that parameters. Every once in a while, I think I creep up to 1.6, 1.7, which is a little too dry for my liking, um, but it, it's okay. It's I think it's in the yellow range or something around there. Oh, yeah. I'm looking at the Pulse Monitor VPD chart right now, and uh, it says for let's see, 79 degrees, the dark green range is between 50 and 56. So you're right in the ballpark as far as that. And I think a lot of people, uh, when it comes to lights off, there's some people like, oh, just ignore it. VP doesn't really matter during lights off. Other people say, oh, it does matter. You absolutely want to still monitor that, right? You can have humidity spikes during lights off. It happens to me all the time. All the time. So being able to lower that RH because your temperature is dropping, right, with lights off. So if you're at a 70 degree, according to this chart, 70 degrees Fahrenheit, well, this is calling the dark green range from 34 to 44% RH. So it's looking for a lot lower of an RH when you have that temperature drop. So VPD chart is definitely something that's pretty interesting. I know some people just ignore it. They can say, hey, the plants are going to grow fine outside of the VPD range, which is absolutely right. You'll definitely be able to get to a harvest. Uh, but if you're looking to optimize growth, keep plants healthy, trying to stay within these ranges on the VPD chart is wise. Well, and, and that's what's, you know, your spikes, I get the same thing in my tents. And I think that's where the AC Infinity controls have just changed everything because you can have your fan, you know, up to 10 if you need to when they're off and, you know, maybe suck some of that humidity out and, you know, have that all on a timer to where it's just all hands off. It's, it does make it easier to control spikes. So much easier. How about CO2? Are you supplementing CO2 at all? I did an exhale bag one time and I just didn't really see any huge benefits where I was going to, you know, 
explain to myself, I'm going to buy this every grow. And like I've seen in your videos, you know, I got five cats, three kids and a wife, and I'm always down here running around. So I always find one cat in the garden. So someone's breathing and I have a, a CO2 meter that I have hanging in there and it's about 350, 400. And then when I get down here, you know, there's a lot of people home, you know, it'll get up to six, 700, 800, which is mind blowing. So that's kind of how I'm supplementing is just our own, you know, exhales and CO2. Pretty straightforward. Yeah, I've tried the exhale bags before and I have a CO2 monitor as well. So I'm able to kind of see and it wasn't very consistent. You know, it was, it was up and down. Sometimes they go in there, it'd be seven, eight, nine hundred, sometimes actually reaching a thousand. I was like, oh, this is fantastic. But then uh, other times I'd go in there and it would just be five, six hundred. So yeah. it's like. It's very inconsistent, so I stop using the exhale bags as well. And same thing with the um, TMB Naturals canisters. Same exact thing, kind of just the inconsistency and the fact that you've got to, you're supposed to buy a new refill packet every two weeks, which can become oh, really? costly over time, you know what I mean? So I stop using those ones as well. This clip is brought to you by AC Infinity. Use discount code MrGrow at 15 to save on any of their products. Thank you.